And what must also be very attractive, and this leads to, to my next question, I think a really important discussion for us this evening, is that there's no house style at DreamWorks, which must be enormously attractive to people working in that field because they're not doing the same thing over and over and because mm -hmm. their own individuality and creativity must be a part of it. Talk to me about that because that's, that's clearly from everything I've read that you've said a very important part of the ethos of DreamWorks, no house style. Yeah, I mean, you know, you've, you've, you've really kind of put your finger on, I think, what differentiates us from perhaps other studios is that we, you know, our goal is to make different kinds of movies. So tell different kinds of stories uh, and create looks and images for those stories that actually serve those stories but are unique. Mm. And so we're asking everybody to come to the table every time and we're going to tell a story about a dog who adopts a boy or we're going to tell a story about a boy who finds a dragon and changes the world. Or we're going to tell a story about four New York zoo animals that get shipwrecked on the Madagascar. What is the animation style? What is the look? What is the uh, kind of storytelling tone? How do we want to shoot the movie? Not how do we make this like our last movie, mm -hmm. but how do we make this its own special, unique thing? And when you're asking people to do that, it's both... Um, really, really hard, I think, because, you know, creating something new is really, really challenging. Um, but I think it challenges people and it makes them bring then their best work because you're asking them to do something that hasn't been seen yet. Mm. And so therefore, the you know, whether it's the artists themselves or the technology that, that is required to tell those stories, everyone's working together to crack that somewhat uncrackable problem. Is there a guiding principle nonetheless for, for every work that you produce that would be uh, a uniform principle, if you like, that can be applied to, to all of the works from DreamWorks? Um, you know, the, the, the things that I try to keep in mind and that we always focus on and try to remind ourselves is that, you know, we need, we need to tell stories as diverse as they can be, and they need to be very diverse from each other. I think there has to be a universal truth to the story. There's, there needs to be a relatability of the characters uh, and, and something that an audience, young and old, can see in that character and see themselves in that character. Um, I think those are the things that really, you know, unify our films, is that, you know, our films are about characters that are trying to accomplish things, uh, are trying to find love, are trying to make a difference in the world. I mean, that's, I think, great films, even if it's a simple story, mm. trying to connect with each other, trying to, you know, please their father, trying to be a good parent, whatever the thing is that's in the film, it has to have that universal truth. Even if it's a, a snail or a dog <laughs> or an ogre, you know, it, and because you're telling stories about those types of characters, you need to really, really know what that universal truth is. The exhibition breaks down into three key elements, mm -hmm. character, story and world. Tell us about those three elements and how they work together in the production of one of your films. Well, we were, you know, we were, when we were talking with Acme about the exhibition itself, um, our, our team at DreamWorks and the team at Acme were trying to figure out, like, how do we tell the story of how our films are made? I don't know that anybody would have been excited about just a very linear movie by movie, here's the history of our mm. studio approach. There's a, actually, that's not represented down there really at all. Every All films are represented, all 29 of our films are down there, but it was more about the... Um, I kind of refer to them as those those lightning rod moments or those lightning rod decisions that get made on a movie that lead to the film that you see in the movie theater and breaking it down into the world that gets created, the story you're telling and the characters that get created really was a way of actually trying to illustrate how by a lot of trial and error sometimes, or by a lot of um, looking for different brainstorming or collaboration, you find that thing that becomes you know, the scene that you saw in the film. And so looking at it from a character perspective, both design and animation and the creation of a character, the, the world, how the world comes together in such an incredible way, especially when nothing, again, is, it has to be all imagined by our artists or, or storytelling, brainstorming. I think it was just a really good way of showing that's a collect, how multi-disciplines come together to find those moments. <laughs> 